Hi there, I'd like to talk to you today about blaspheming the Word of God and people who actually go against the Bible. This is the King James Bible. I've made my research, and this is a Greek text, the Nestle-Talon 28th edition. This is Alexandrian Egypt. And this book right here is the Holy Bible in its original manuscripts. You say, what do you mean there's two? Well, please research the Bible version issue, and if you don't understand how the people changed the Word of God into a lie, please get in contact with me. The King James Bible, it's a great Texas Receptus-based Bible. So we're going to see, really, what the Lord meant when he said the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, And God spake all these words. Okay, God actually said this. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So first he identifies himself, the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same one, not ba Baal. Everybody seems to be falling away from the Lord. And that's where I'm going to explain to you today. Thou shall have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, earth beneath, waters beneath the earth. And it's contrasted here in Deuteronomy number 4. Also the Ten Commandments are in Deuteronomy number 4. Uh, speaks quite a bit about uh, graven images here. 4... Number 13, Deuteronomy 4, 13. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded to perform even the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Well, that's strange because the Catholics seem to think that we can change this for some reason. They've took the second commandment and traded it for neighbor's wife, which is a sub-commandment of number 10. Number 14, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and judgments that ye may do them in the land whither ye go to possess the holy land. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, likeness of anything male or female, likeness of any beast that is on the earth, likeness of any winged fowl that flieth uh, in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Sunday, sun worship day. It's not the Sabbath day. So Catholics seem to, if you keep reading on the Ten Commandments, they're breaking the Sabbath day and they're breaking graven images. Why would a church, church being a reference to a building, which is not the biblical term, church in the Bible means people. And church, modern day church, is the great big church buildings. So why? Why would the Catholic church seem to think it's all right to break two or three commandments. Well, obviously they're lying, so they're breaking the law, and they're the, 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 the thou shalt not lie, bear false witness, and they also uh, murdered hundreds and hundreds and thousands of Christians at Bible-believing Christians like me. I could be killed for speaking to you the truth. So let's hope that I am martyred and I get out of this crazy world and let's hope it happens fast or the rapture the pre-tribulation rapture let's read uh, just a tiny bit here in deuteronomy verse uh, chapter 4 number 28 
Deuteronomy 4, 28. And there ye shall serve God's lowercase g, the work of men's hands, wood or stone, and which neither shall see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, which we are in the latter days, if thou shalt turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt, shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord, Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. And of course, we all know the story of the, uh, the golden calf. Moses is on the, uh, the mount, writing down the Torah, first five books of the Bible. God immediately senses idolatry. Moses didn't even know, but God said, you got to go down there. And my, Moses was mad. They had this golden calf dancing around this mo golden molten calf. And they didn't say we're going to worship it as our God. They said that is our God. That golden calf right there. And I'm not going to go on to that. That's another rabbit trail. But the fact of the matter is when you have graven images and you say that is God. Well, then you got a problem. I'm going to play a little clip for you. Uh, and then let's see about these commandments that's, that you wrote. Even This is even in, in the Catholic Bible. I mean. But uh, let's let's play a little clip right now and see exactly what's going on here. It's so very important for our young people to understand the importance of having a, having a patron saint in their lives. A patron saint, just think of it, follows them along the path. The patron saint knows they want to be a saint. So the patron saint is interceding before the throne of the Lord. Intercession is not biblical. Nowhere in the Bible that says that Mary or the patron saints must intercede. You are praying, you are in prayer, you're praying to somebody on the side here or just in the corner here. You're not praying to God. You're praying to somebody else, some spiritual being, and it's not the Lord. Just look at these people that you're supposed to, to pray to. This is... This is Catholic doctrine. You're supposed to pray to these people. Isn't that wonderful? So how is somebody supposed to go to heaven? Well, if they eat the sacrament of the Eucharist, a blasphemous ritual of eating the physical blood and the physical body of Jesus, that's such a blasphemy can learn more about that if you're if you're a Catholic that's how you attain salvation the first 20 minutes that you eat it or if if you haven't committed a sin the Bible says you are to be saved through faith alone by the blood of Jesus Christ Jesus died for your sins not like you're we're, we're gonna see a video right now that's totally taken out of the picture. Jesus did not die for your sins. Absolutely not. I mean, that's King James onlyists. Let's see what they think about uh, how you get saved. If we die in God's grace, but are still imperfectly purified, that is, imperfectly conformed to Christ, we are assured of salvation, but must undergo the necessary purification in purgatory before we enter the joy of heaven. Indulgences lessen the time we need to spend in purgatory by drawing from the church's treasury of merits. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Shorten your time in purgatory. You've heard it. It's straight out of the pages of the catechism. Roman Catholic Catechism. I suggest that you do buy that book. You read it. Then you compare it to scripture to see what the Roman Catholic Church actually teaches. So they, they say that if you uh, 
if you die within 20 minutes of re receiving the Eucharist, then maybe you'll have to uh, only go to purgatory for 20 years instead of 50 years. And then if we can say some masses, what's going to involve money, uh, maybe we can shorten it to 10 years. So 10 years, purgatory time, then you're on your way to heaven. So make sure you receive the Eucharist, which is in John chapter 6. This is what the Catholics do. John chapter 6, verse 48. I am that bread of life. Keep reading. Father, Holy Father, keep reading your book. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Oh, the Eucharist. It's got to be it. Keep reading. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye shall have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me shall live by me. And almost never is verse 58 re read, because this puts everything into context. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Son of man came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. The bread which came down from heaven, that nourishes your spiritual soul. The, the spirit is found in the pages of this book, not by eating a wafer. Just absolutely insane. So basically, folks, uh, i just like to, to finish with one more passage here, and then we'll be on our way. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope that you do keep the commandments, because in Revelation 22, verse 14, you should have the last page of this Bible by heart. You should know every single, because the last page of the Bible is very, very powerful. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and they may enter through the gates into the city, the city in heaven. I can only imagine, ladies and gentlemen, how beautiful and wonder wonderful, more wonderful than, than all the, the gold in, at the Vatican and all the false teachings that Satan's church is the Roman Catholic Church, uh, Jesuits, Freemasonry, it's all tied, uh, the Anglican Church, I mean, the, the Queen is the supreme head of the Anglican Church. We're just, we're just in a system here, we're, we're in the world, and we're not going to lose our, our, our guidance, which is the Bible, the real one, Not the Catholic Catechism. Let's be a good Catholic and let's get on our knees and pray to idols and and receive blasphemous Eucharists and just it's just it's it's getting out of hand and people are not even knowing what what they're doing and it's 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 terrible.